Okay, so this is part one of a four-part main series of basically how to port a weapon model uh, that you buy or that you've ripped from a game into your Fallout 4 game. Part one will deal with the programs that you need. Uh, the second part will deal with the actual porting process of the meshes. Uh, third part will deal with the porting process for the textures, so the textures that already came with the model that you have, and getting them into the Fallout 4 ready state. And part four will be getting your gun into your game, so that will be the ESP side of things, and uh, just some other touch-ups on like attach points and other things, and implementation, I guess, if we'll get to it. Um, yeah. So, well, let me just set that up. Regarding the programs that you need, you will need FO4 Edit or the Creation Kit. Uh, this tutorial will cover FO4 Edit because that's what I'm most comfortable with. However, I do suggest still getting the Creation Kit, and I will go through that in a second, uh, because of how um, powerful it is and how essential it is for some operations. I for it it's alright, but it's like it's like creation kit light. Like it does things easily enough and it's fast to boot up compared to the creation kit depending on how you load it. Um but yeah that's how I'm gonna do it. So you can get FO4 edit from the Nexus as you see on the screen. Um it's really straightforward. It's compatible with MO2, Vortex, Nexus Mod Manager whichever mod manager you're using, or manual, sure. Um, you would get the creation kit from the Bethesda Launcher site. So you just go to Google, type in Bethesda Launcher, uh, or whatever, and you download the launcher, you install the creation kit. Um, the important thing about the creation kit is that it's not just the creation kit itself, it's all the different sub-programs that they use. So one of the programs that's within the creation kit is Archive 2. Archive 2 is the best reliable um, extractor and packer for BA2s, which is the pack file that uh, Fallout 4, uh, the Bethesda used for Fallout 4. You want things to be packed most of the time because it'll improve the uh, performance of your game because we'll say that if files are loaded in a BA2 will load when the game is loading but if they're loose files they're loaded during the game so as you'll say walking around in the outside world um, causing your game to load those files as you encountering them so you'll get jitter especially if you have like 4k textures um, depending on your rig as well um, so ideally you want to have things packed uh, especially textures special textures uh, but yeah, so that's MFO4 Edit and the Bethesda Launcher. Uh, you will use FO4 Edit for uh, editing the ESP once you're at the later stages of porting your weapon. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. So once you have it set up and you load up your game, uh, sorry, you load up the plugin that you're going to be making later on, um, you'll see you can edit your weapon stats and everything from the ammo type it takes to the capacity of the magazine damage uh what npcs what ammo npcs spawn with uh, and then the attachments on your gun from ammunition to optics to foregrips muzzles all that kind of stuff as well as the implementation of how you'd spread it so if you put it into a cell or um well you wouldn't do cells in f you you do that in creation kit uh, or quest uh, levelless injection, or just the classic levelless injection, but I'll deal with that later on. Uh, but yeah, so next thing you will need that you will be essential uh, will be uh, you'll need something to port the models into Fallout 4. So you'll need 3DS Max 2013 or 2015, um, ideally. These are the optimum things to use. 2013 of th version of 3DS Max is the best because that was the last version supported by Bethesda and they have their official tools. Um, and when you load in your, for example, when you install the creation kit, importantly, 
and you go to your tool section in your Fallout 4 folder, which should be in your Steam folder if you bought it through Steam, uh, you'll find Archive 2, amongst other things, but also the NIF exporter. This is the official NIF exporter, and that's like the ideal thing you want to use. Plus, if you use 3DS Max 2013, you can uh, generate new collisions. So that'll be how your mesh will interact with the world. You can just use existing ones from mods that already have collisions, and that's what I'm going to do because I don't have 2013. Um, because I, well, I do have it, but I don't have it installed and working. Long story. But uh, the 2015 version, which, which I have, uh, I have the community NIF exporter, which is not as good as the Bethesda one. It comes with some uh, issues, but it's it's more than enough, more than good enough for me. Uh, to get 3DS Max, you need to get you need to be using 2013 to 2015, I believe. Those are the best ones. Uh, 2015 is better for animation. 2013 is better for meshwork and collisions. Um, you have to find those on your own. Like, there's no official distribution for those anymore because they're out of date. Uh, Autodesk no longer distribute them. Uh, they only distribute, I think, like up to 2018 and above, or maybe 2017. I can't remember. But to get the best versions for Fallout 4, you've got to find them with your own ingenuity. Uh, or if you can find a link somewhere. You can also use Outfit Studio, and I'm going to be showing you in the Mesh section how to do it with Outfit Studio and 3ds Max, because um, I used to do it through Outfit Studio, but the quality of your meshes will be slightly less than if you were using 3ds Max, and you can't generate collisions. Outfit Studio is primarily meant for like clothing or flesh, whilst you want to use an official in exporter importer exporter for uh hard surfaces that guns would be that's a generalization i'm not being precise but that's close enough to why you'd want to use them um and you also want to be using a program a picture editing software that could handle dds files uh <clears throat> and you might need a plugin for that so like i'm using uh photoshop here but I had to get the Intel DDS plugin um, via Google. Uh, it's it's a plugin that you can plug, you can add to your for Photoshop setup, and it will allow you to deal with DDS files. So you can import and you can export slash save as DDS, which is the primary texture file format that Bethesda uses. Uh, another useful tool that you will need. Uh, will be iStorm's Texture Toolbox, which is available on the Nexus by a guy called iStorm. He's a really knowledgeable dude. And uh, this tool will save you so much time. Uh, like, you don't need to know as much about textures if you're going to be using this tool because it handles everything for you. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, you can deal with metal roughness, back loss textures, uh, separating and combining uh, maps to become spec loss, uh, porting from Fallout 76, uh, Unreal Engine, Unity, even COD Modern Warfare, uh, the old one, uh, uh, re revised or I can't remember, Redux, I can't remember what's called, uh, 2019, EFT, so Escape from Tarkov, it'll handle it for you, and put the right maps into the right channel, into the right channels, so that's really good. I highly suggest everyone using this, even if you do already know how to use textures, because it just makes that process faster, especially when you're dealing with a lot of textures, uh, which some models have, depending on how many components they have and how the modeler has UV'd. So I split up their uh, gun. But yeah, so... Yeah, yeah. And also NIF scope. NIF scope is also very useful. Uh, you can get NIF scope from the, their GitHub. So you just go to Google and type in NIF scope. NIF scope is amazing. A very, very useful program for dealing with meshes, whether it's clothing or... Um, buildings or constructibles or weapons anything uh, you can see we'll do this one like for example here you can see uh, the mesh it's not textured at the moment 
and you can deal with everything on the left hand side i'll talk with that about that later on but that's also a very useful thing uh once you this is a once it's already in fallout 4 game ready state uh once you've exported it from alpha studio or through ds max you want to uh twiddle with it in NIF scope yeah so those are the main programs that you'll be needing for porting uh you can also use for audio uh, Audacity, which is a really good audio program uh, for mixing sounds together and altering sounds, and also uh, Wavasaur uh, for dealing with. Uh, do I have it? Yeah, Wavasaur for dealing with auto fire sounds and making loops. I'm not gonna go into that because I'm not really good at making loops, so I'm not gonna pass on ones I don't have. But I highly suggest Audacity as well. Like both of them are really essential, but Audacity is the one that I use primarily. But I'm not really going to go over audio in this tutorial series because uh, you don't necessarily need to do new sounds to be able to port a weapon into Fallout 4. But yeah, uh, that's the end of part one.